Hello everybody, I'm Grant Ebbett and you're watching Gabbit Media and this is the complete beginner's guide to animating in Blender 2.8. We'll be animating the basic cube, going through keyframes, rendering and exporting animations, and common problems you might come up against when doing animations for the first time. This is the first episode of a longer series of animation, so look out for other episodes. You can also join Animation, an animation challenge for the month of May for all levels. You can find out more about this in the links in the description or go across to my website. I've got my screencast keys in the bottom corner here. So if I forget to say anything, you can look down there at what I'm pressing. So this is the basic scene that you'll see when you first open Blender. Now we can go to the animation workspace, just click on the top here. And that gives a nice starting setup for animation. We've got the camera view at the side here, so we're looking through this camera here at our cube. If I move around, you'll see a sort of similar view. And I'm using middle mouse button to move around my scene. I use shift middle mouse button to strafe and zoom in and out with the wheel. So if I left click on my cube, I can move my cube by pressing G to grab. And you can see it moving in the camera there. The camera is all important because we need to render our scenes once we've done. And we need to do it from the view of a camera like we're a filmmaker. So we can edit all our scene in here and see exactly what we're ending up with over here in the camera. What we've got down the bottom is the dope sheet and that will be important when we set up our keyframes and animation shortly. You've also got an outliner which tells you everything you've got in your scene and you can select things in the outliner if it makes life easier. And you've got a lot of tools down the side here. We're not gonna go much into those at the moment except for the rendering to just at the top here. But I'll go through that shortly. So first of all, let's animate our cube. So I'm going to move it from one side to the other. What I will need to do then is set two keyframes, one at the beginning and one at the end, to tell Blender where I want it to start and finish. Blender will work out the bits in between from there. So let's go to our starting point. So this is our dope sheet down here, and we've got frame one and we've got frame 250, which you can also see in the output setup over here, frame start one, 250 end. You can also see the frame rate there, which is 24 frames per second. So every second will be 24 frames. And that will give you an indication of how fast your things are going to be moving. So let's move our cube into position for the starting point. So we're on frame one down here. I can press G with my cube selected and I can grab it on the X axis. So G then X and that will constrain it to the X axis. I can move it across out of the camera view just there. So this is where I wanted to start. So I need to insert what's called a keyframe. And the shortcut to that is I, so I for insert, and we're animating the location at the moment. You can also come down here and go to key, insert keyframes in your dope sheet menu. But for now, I'll use the shortcut up here. So I, and then click on location, and you can see these yellow diamonds here. So the dope sheet summary is telling you that there is a keyframe on this point, And below that is the details of the keyframe. So there's a keyframe under cube, and it's saying cube action is the action, but I'll go into that in later series. And it's telling us that the object transforms are being keyframed. So the X location, Y location, and Z location are all being keyframed. Let's take it to frame 24, five-ish by right-clicking on the timeline. So you right-click, I'm holding down right-click now and moving my playhead, as it's called, along the timeline. And I can just right click in different areas. So I'll right click at 25, and then I will move my cube into position where I want it to finish. So G, then X, and then move it across, and you can see it going past the camera, and it's gonna go off the camera this side. Left click to select that position. I have to be in my 3D viewport to do this, of course. I can't do it down here. So I can't press G, then X down here because it's moving my keyframes. So it must be in my viewport up here. So G then X and move it into position. And now we need to set another keyframe at 25. So I'll do this by going to the dope sheet this time, key, and then insert keyframes. Now it's slightly different here. It's saying, where do I want to put the keyframes? And channels are the different things along here. So key, insert keyframe, all channels will insert a keyframe on all the channels. Now you might be thinking, well, that's a bit pointless, isn't it? Because the Y and the Z aren't used and you'd be right, but it was just a quick way of doing it. I could have selected the X channel, then key, then insert keyframes, and then only selected channel. And that would have made slightly more sense to be honest. But generally speaking, we'll probably use the Y and Z a bit later anyway. Now I want to see my animation so I can use my right mouse button 
and drag along the timeline and you can see it's working out that it needs to move from here to here. So that's the basics of keyframes and that's the basics of animation as well, that you need to put your keyframes in first. Then if anything happens in between, like you want it to twist or rotate or something strange or move at a weird angle, you can put in your in-between frames. So our animation is a bit boring. I'm going to put a plane in so I can see it sliding across a floor. So in my viewport, shift A to add, or you can go to the add menu up here. Shift A is the shortcut, and we're going to add a plane. It will add it wherever your 3D cursor is, and my 3D cursor with the white and red dashed line around it was right in the center. I'm going to scale that up with S, and then drag it outwards, and that's scaling it up. Okay, so the problem is now that our cube, if I select our cube, it's digging into our floor. So I need to bring it up from the floor, so I can press G, then Z, and I can actually press one, and that'll bring it exactly above the floor, because I know that's one blender unit, so G, Z, then one. And now we've got it above the floor, so we'll play our animation again, and it's back to where it was. Now what you have to remember is once you've keyframed objects, that's where they'll be stuck, basically. So Blender will put them straight back to where their keyframes are. So my movement won't have made any difference. So what I have to do is go to a keyframe and move it. So if I press G, Z, then one, and this time I insert a keyframe over the top of my keyframe. So I location again, and it's inserted the keyframe over the top, but it's sinking into the floor for the next keyframe. Now what I can do is the Z location is the same in both. Well, that's what I want anyway. I want it to stay the same height. So I can copy the first Z location and put it onto the second. So we select our Z location keyframe by left clicking. So Shift D is to copy things or to duplicate things in Blender. So we press Shift D with the Z location keyframe selected. That's this diamond. And you'll see it selected because it will turn yellow. Shift D and just drag your mouse across to the other one and release your mouse button and that will insert it over the top. Now when I drag across my timeline with right click, you can see it stays above the ground. Now as I've said before, we don't actually need the Z location in this particular case. So what you can do is select both of these and press delete and I can delete the keyframes and it's deleted that entire channel but it's still working because there's no actual animation on that channel. The same for the Y location so I can select that one, shift and select the last one and press delete and it's still got the X location because I didn't select those and it's still working. You can also press spacebar to play along your animation at real time. However, if it turns red up here, that means it's calculating and it's not quite at real time. So for a moment there, it was dropping a few frames. So it's telling me the frame rate at the top there. But it will try and keep it to real time in terms of the time it takes to get from A to B. Okay, so we want to get a bit more complicated, so let's make it rotate. So let's go to the beginning keyframe and set a rotation. Another useful thing you can use is the record button down here. So I'll press record. Now anything I do in here will be recorded. So if I press R for rotate and just left click because I don't actually want to rotate it, I want that to be the starting point, it's now put in all these rotation keyframes and also the scale keyframes. So it's keyframed every channel. So the record will keyframe all channels. Let's go to the end by right clicking and bring in our playhead to the end and I want it to rotate 360 degrees. What will help me if I press N, I've got my transforms up here. So I can rotate in the Z axis 360 degrees and press enter. And you can see it's placed a keyframe under the Z rotation. Don't worry too much about the Euler rotation word at the moment. It's reasonably complicated to understand, so don't worry about that. You can see also that when I've keyframed in here, it hasn't keyframed the other channels because I had the channel selected in here and it recorded only that channel that I had selected. If I had selected my cube and pressed R to rotate, let's say, and I'm not going to do any more rotation because I've already got it at 360 degrees in the Z, and then left click, it records everything. So anything you do in the viewport here, it will record all the channels, but you can go up here and change them individually with the record button on, and it will record only that channel. So we want our animation to look a bit more interesting. At the moment, it's just doing this, and it's only 25 frames long, but we've got 250 frames to play with. 
Let's do a little more, but I'm going to end it at 50 frames. So I can come down here and press 50 or type in 50. And let's change it up here as well. So I've got a two second roughly animation. So let's make it move back into the middle and maybe scale up this time. So if I take my playhead to frame 50, grab it in the X axis, so G then X, bring it into the middle. And this time I'm going to press S and just scale it up a bit. Now I'm going to drag this dope sheet up so I can see all my keyframes. Now because I had the record button on, this should work okay. So it should go as I go backwards, scale down and across. So it's rotating across here, then moving into the middle and scaling up, which is great. I'm going to actually undo that for now. And I'm going to show you a common problem that you might come up against. So I've got my rotation in and it's moving back into the middle. I'm going to turn the record button off and I'm going to select my scale keyframes and I'll do this a different way this time by pressing B to box select and dragging over my scale keyframes which turns them yellow and I can delete them, delete keyframes. So I've got my animation here, it moves across spinning and comes back into the middle and I want it to scale upwards as it reaches the middle. So I'll go to my end frame and I'll scale it up to about there and I'll set a keyframe for scaling. Now let's scrub across our timeline and it's kept it all big. That's because I have no previous keyframes so it's made it all big and it's just got that one keyframe. So in fact, there's no animation happening here. It's just sticking to this one keyframe, which is when it's all big. So if I go back to the beginning and change my scale back to one, which I can do in here, I can actually click and drag over these. It selects them all and I can press one now enter and it'll bring them all back to one. But do remember without record on, it won't keyframe them. So a good plan is to come into here, key, insert keyframe, all channels. And now my scale will be keyframed as well as everything else. But everything else is the same, so that's fine. Now at the moment it's scaling up all the way through my animation. I actually want it to move across and keep the same scale to this point and then only scale up as it gets to the end here. So I can therefore select my first keyframes for scale, all those three, shift D to duplicate and move them into the middle. That means there won't actually be any animation between those two keyframes for the scale. As you can see, it's staying the same size. Then when it comes back to the middle, it scales up. So that's the very basics of keyframing in Blender 2.8. I can press spacebar now to see my whole animation. Now what would be nice if my camera saw a bit more of the scale, so I can press N over this toolbar, scroll down a touch to where it says lock camera to view, and press N to get rid of that. And now when I zoom out a bit, I can move the camera in the same way as I move viewports. I'll just stop the animation for a moment so you can see the shortcut keys. So wheel to move out and middle mouse button to move around. Let's get it to a nice position, somewhere around there. And there we go. The one last problem I am having is that it cuts through the floor at this point. So have a think about how you can solve that. The way I can solve that at the moment is I can actually move it up in the Z axis from here to here. So at this point, it's got a keyframe for the Z location and it's perfectly above the floor at the moment, as you can see there. But as it goes along here, it cuts into the floor. So we need to keyframe this last bit here. And I can press my record to record whatever I do, grab it in the Z axis, move it up above, somewhere around there. And now we should be able to see as it scales, it moves upwards as well. So it always stays above the floor. And because I had record on, it recorded everything I did. One thing to watch out for, let's say I'm playing back my animation like this. And then I think, actually what I'd like it to do is move over here. Remember you've got the record on, it will set keyframes for all that channel. So suddenly it's moving all weirdly. But this can be very useful because you can move it all over the place whilst record's on and it will do all sorts of interesting things. The other thing to bear in mind that if you have keyframes very close to each other, it can create quite a jumpy effect. I can select all these keyframes down here by selecting the dope sheet summary keyframe and that selects everything underneath. And I can then G to grab and move them very close to each other and you'll see how this jumps. 
So watch out for keyframes that are very close to each other. I'll undo that. Lastly, to render your animations, you have the render tabs over here. So you've got all EV settings here, which can be quite fun to play with. But the render output just underneath it is the important bit. So at the moment, the resolution is HD and it's rendering at 100% of that. You can bring this down to 50 or 25% to check your animations. But EV will render this very quickly anyway. Remember to set your start and end frame so it doesn't go on pointlessly and it captures your entire animation. And lastly, but still very important, is where are your files going? You click in this little folder here and you can set exactly where they're going. So mine are going to go onto the desktop and I'll create a new folder, test animation, and then click inside that folder and name it as well. Now, generally speaking, it's good practice to output them all as single frames. So PNGs are good. And that's how I would tend to output. However, other people like to go for FFmpeg and you can check your encoding methods here. H.264 is the most widely used and you can change your quality here. Once you're happy with those settings, then you can go to render, render animation and a new screen will pop up and it will render your animation pretty quickly if you've got a decent graphics card and you're using Eevee. I can then close down this screen, find my file and play it back. And there we have the basics of animation. Do remember the animation challenge for the month of May. If you want to get involved with that, have a look at my website. Links to that and other courses are in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.